Well, hello, YouTubers. This is Bob Hickman. It is so good to be back with all of you. Well, my goodness, I tell you, the letters have been coming in like crazy, and I'm working on all of them. You're going to have to forgive me. I've been doing so many private readings that I'm a little behind on the videos still. But we're going to try to catch up and get you in all the videos, I promise. But today I thought we'd work for a little while on some more letters. So, uh, before we get into those, give me just a moment and let me attune to the spirit world. Okay. My spirit guy Fletcher's here. He says hi to all of you. All right. My first letter tonight uh, goes out to third dimension. Um, you know, hi, yes, you ask about uh, upcoming things. Well, you know, I do see uh, January and February as turning points for you. And I feel like energetically you definitely are on your track. So there's nothing to worry about here. The thing is the spirit people keep showing me that uh, you're coming into a place of really positive energy. So even though the changes in the past have been somewhat you know, stressful or traumatic or intense, this time you're going to actually get some visions. And I want you to watch your dreams because they show me that spirit is showing that you're getting on, you know, a kind of a new path here. And I do feel like as we get into January, that really manifests for you. One of the things that I want you to really focus on here is really work on, you know, listening to yourself. Your inner voice right now is really bringing you a lot of information. And I think you've got to keep practicing listening to that. So you want to keep doing meditation. But I do see you being on the, the right path. And this year, this upcoming year is going to be a big change for you here emotionally and materially. Thanks for writing. Okay, next letter, Pukey Pop. Hi. You know, um, yeah, you write some interesting questions here about uh, sexuality. Um, well, first of all, you know, in terms of how somebody relates to their sexuality, uh, I always say, you know, be yourself. Uh, if you feel an attraction a certain way, that's natural to you. You know, if you're a male and you like females, that's natural. If you're a male and you like males, then that's natural for you. You know, each person um, is who they are. And I think that we have to be very careful in saying, well, you have to view the world this way or that way. Because I think that each person is unfolding and discovering themselves. And, you know, remember karmically, we've all been male. We've all been female. So, you know, within every person there is a balance and a blend of masculine and feminine energies. So if you find yourself being attracted to somebody of the same sex, you know, explore that reality. If that's what you're being called to, you know, I don't think there's anything, you know, particularly wrong with that. I think it's who you are. Um, and, you know, one of the things that you have to also be careful is don't feel the need to pressure yourself into a definition like I have to define myself as this or I have to define myself as that. You know, at your age right now, you're in a place of transition and I pick up a lot of changes for you. And I feel like your own sexual identity is kind of part of this transition period for you. So I want you just to be gentle with yourself and accept how you feel. Uh, I feel like you might want to, you know, even spend some time talking to a, another counselor about this or even, you know, um, you know, share with your close friends because I feel that they'll accept you however you are, okay? But you're fine just like you are and there's no need to condemn yourself or feel judgmental. How you feel is how you feel, right? Okay? So love yourself and be in harmony because you're a good person. And you know, we're all spirit in the end. So, you know, this earthly shell and this experience is one of many. Okay? Thank you for writing. I hope that helps some. Okay, uh, Morgan44. Yeah, you know, uh, you write about your career here. And, you know, i got to tell you, I do feel you have a gift for teaching. But I keep picking up transition here around you. And I feel like once we get into the next school year, you may be looking at working in a private school here. I keep getting private school around you. And I'm getting you moving into older kids. I think that uh, you're going to find that you do better working with an older group, even possibly junior high or high school. Um, I feel like, you know, it's good that you're working with the younger ones now. But that actually, I feel, is, is a kind of a little bit of a carryover from a past life. They showed me you had a past life in Atlantis. And, um, 
you know, that you were uh, very attuned to spirituality of younger children. So that's why you feel called to teach that in this life. But I see you being in a private school, and I do feel like if you could look at teaching something that's more spiritually oriented, you'd have greater satisfaction, and uh, that would work better for you. Okay? Thanks for writing. Okay. Um, next letter, call me crazy. Yes. Um, well, you know, it's interesting here. Um, one of the things that I pick up around you is they show me here that over the next three years, you're opening a lot of doors spiritually. And I do feel you have some spiritual abilities, particularly in the area of clairvoyance uh, and also channeling. And this comes over because in one of your past lives you were, uh, you were a channeler. And I feel like right now you're starting to receive information through your sleep. And I'd like you to ask your spirit people to help you to receive it consciously while you're awake, okay? Uh, you know, so I want you to, to, you know, be open to that. There are changes coming. Now, in terms of a career as a channeler, um, I feel like you have a few things going on. One is a communicator theme. And I feel like in the future you'll be doing a lot of writing. And you can also use your channeling ability in that area as well. So you don't have to necessarily be a psychic or a channeler, though you could be. Uh, but I feel you have a few years yet to settle in to your own power to where it's to the degree that you can actually look at that in a career area. So, But you got about three years. So the next three years, practice being open. Try to receive stuff consciously. Uh, but I do feel you'll make some good progress here. Okay, But remember writing. It's one of your gifts. Thanks for writing. Okay, uh, next letter, Lori Edwards 10. Hi. You know, you wrote an interesting letter here about uh, clairaudient experiences. And i got to tell you, actually, um, you have actually two different situations going on here. Uh, your first experience was actually not clairaudience. It was telepathy. Telepathy is where you receive mind-to-mind -mind contact with people around you. So that's telepathy. Claire audience is spirit voices that come over from a different dimension. Now, Claire, um, excuse me, uh, telepathy actually many times operates through the pituitary gland, the third eye. So that's one area where you're, you're receiving information. Now, Claire audience tends to come through the inner ear. So you've got to kind of discern, is the information coming through here or here? And actually around you, I pick up that it's coming in both locations. And the reason why that's kind of cut off for now is you have a little bit of fear about it. And that fear just shuts it down. So I want you to know, first of all, you're not crazy. Uh, and it's not unsafe. Um, and you can control that flow of information. So don't fear like if I let it come in, it's going to take me over. Because that's one of the things that you have a fear of. But it's telepathy and clairvoyance. So I want you to learn about um, the chakras, and particularly the chakra here, the third eye. Um, focus on that. It's a blue light. Try to see a beautiful, deep indigo blue light here. And that will open up a doorway. And you'll start to be able to do telepathy as well as get visions. And then for the, the clairaudience, you want to ask spirit people to talk to you and say, I'm listening, and try to hear. Okay? Sometimes it will come through one center or the other. And there's no right or wrong. It's just the way you receive it. But I do pick up around you both working. Okay? So anyways, let me know how that goes. But uh, you're okay. And I do see it coming back for you. I want you particularly watch the um, beginning of December. They show that that's a very strong spiritual time for you. Okay? Thanks for writing. All right. Next letter. Uh, Monaco Chalpuri. Uh, you know, you ask about careers here. And... Yes, I do feel that you have a lot of artistic ability. But, uh, you know, in the future, I actually don't get you going straight into arts as a career. I'm actually getting around you uh, journalism. And I feel that you have a very strong gift for working with people to capture a story and tell them that. So I'd like you to do some exploration here in the area of journalism. I really feel like that's the direction you want to go. Okay? Now, as for the arts, I do see that being part of your future. Uh, but it's going to be more of a second career. And I feel when you get into later years, that's going to you know start to take up. After you get into your 40s and 50s, you'll do more in the arts area. But for right now, I really would like you to explore journalism. Okay? Thank you for writing. All right. Uh, next letter. Tampkin777. Yeah. You ask about um, 
what's going to happen with tolerance here. Well, you know, 2012, um, I do feel that we're going to start to see more tolerance towards minorities, towards people of alternate sexualities, sexual orientations. Um, and, you know, what's going to bring that about in 2012? So I do believe as the alien presence gets stronger on the earth, that's the beings from other worlds literally going to be appearing more and more. Uh, I think humanity is going to be able to, uh, you know, start to realize, wow, there's more than us. And I think that revelation will unite us as people on the earth. Uh, may, it may initially start as fear, like we have to band together. But out of that comes a real network of support. And as the alien presence becomes more open on the earth, uh, I do see us really starting to, you know, work together. Because we're going to be forced in a position to say, wow, we're not the only people. And uh, the aliens will give us an opportunity to practice compassion. Okay. hope that helps. Next letter, G94544. Hi. Yeah, you want to know about your spirit guide. Yeah. Well, um, actually, you have a guide around you, and his name is Terrence, T-E-R-R-A-N-C-E. -E. Uh, but he's been around you particularly the last five years, because they showed the last five years for you have been a lot of struggle, a lot of upheaval, a lot of turning. But Terrence is with you, and you're going to be coming out of that. And it's interesting because... Um, you do have also some past life stuff coming up here. And one of your past lives was in Spain, and it was in the 1400s. And they show me that you, you were in that life, you were an artist. So you did a lot of stuff. Um, you were, Fletcher said you were an architect, excuse me. He said you did buildings, you did renderings of buildings. So you are an architect, but it also was very much an artistic theme. And I feel like an artistic theme is going to really manifest also again in this lifetime. So watch as we go into the new year, okay? But your guide's name is Terrence. Thanks for writing. All right, next letter, um, Darkness, 22714. Wants to know about the Dark Lord and the Dark Lady. Yes, um, you know, in Wicca, we do believe that the God and the Goddess have dual aspects. They can be gods of light, but also gods of darkness. And darkness does not equate to evil in the Wiccan path. Um, it sounds like from your letter that you're wondering if they're evil or ominous. No, darkness is just a, another type of energy. You know, there's good darkness and there's bad darkness. Like there's good light and there's bad light. Um, so we have to kind of think on not necessarily judgment about darkness. Darkness is an aspect. In darkness, creativity is birthed. In darkness, new life begins. In darkness, our deepest selves are present and, and unencumbered by glaring light. So darkness has a very positive aspect. And if you're somebody who's drawn to the dark lord and the dark lady, the darker aspects, you know, you may be drawn to concepts of death and transition to the spirit world. Uh, and that's okay. That's not evil. It is powerful. Um, you know, I always say that we have to balance light and darkness. So if we're all light, that's imbalanced. If we're all darkness, that's imbalanced. So think in terms of the polarity and balancing that. And right now, if you're drawn to the darker aspects, that may be a phase where you are right now. And let them work through you. Always seek the higher guidance and ask for their, their help. And, you know, I do feel there's a lot of creative energy that's coming in around you. And that's one of the reasons you are being drawn to the Dark Lord and the Dark Lady. But no, they're not evil. They are a powerful force for good. They're very good for psychic development. So if you want to practice that, ask for the darker aspects to take you deep within and you'll uncover great mysteries. Okay, hope that helps a little bit. Thanks for writing. All right, next letter, Snoopy Lover Girl 1. Nice question. Yeah, you ask about uh, shadow people. Are they dangerous? Well, actually, no. When you are at a place that is, like, haunted and you see shadow people, what that generally indicates um, are earthbound souls. Now, it doesn't make them necessarily evil. They're not all goodness and light. Usually there are people, though, who for whatever reason cannot stay. Uh, they don't want to cross over to the light, so they want to stay here on earth. Uh, generally, they're people with emotional trauma, or they have a great misunderstanding of divinity and a great fear of God. 
And so, uh, or the divine or the goddess, whatever terms you want to use for the higher power. But the earthbound souls are many times people through whatever, you know, uh, reason, whether it's trauma or lack of knowledge or fear, refuse to cross over to the spirit world. And because they have free will, they can stay on earth. However, their vibration stays very dense, and that's why they look like shadow people. Um, are some of them bad? Yeah, some of them are bad. Shadow people many times will drain electrical devices, and they can physically drain a human's energy. So we want to, you know, not encourage them to stay on the earth, but encourage them to cross over to the light. So you want to light white candles and pray for them and ask them to go to the light gently and kindly, not force them, but ask them to go and pray and ask the angels to take them over because they can be helped. Okay? Anyways, hope that helps a little bit. My goodness, guys, well, that's all I'm going to get to do today. I'm so honored. Thank you for your letters. Thanks for writing. Keep it here at Spirit Show. You know we've got more videos coming. And, of course, you know next week I'll bring you another Messages from the Spirit World.